All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see, this is clearly not my truck. This is our farm truck. It's a 2012 LML uh, Duramax uh, 2500 HD crew cab short bed. Um, it's been a really great running truck. It's, I say, it's a 2012. Uh, it's got probably 210,000 miles on it or so. Really strong running. It is deleted and tuned. Um, it's got an H&S Mini Max on it. Uh, basically, that's how we bought it. Um, so we have not had it retuned to EFI Live, um, anything like that. But it's been a very good running truck, real strong. Um, really like it. But um, as a lot of guys know, on the LMLs, they have a CP4 injection pump instead of a CP3, um, and they are prone to failure. Uh, the real problem is, is that when uh, they do fail, they send shrapnel, they send metal shrapnel down the line into the injectors. Um, through the fuel rails into the injectors and it's going to damage or destroy the entire injection system And it's probably going to cost you, you know upwards of ten thousand um, dollars For a shop to replace all of that including the CP4 itself um, And so what can we do about that, right? And so Exergy uh, basically came out with a replacement FPR M prop um, That basically has a stronger screen here on it um, but basically, I think they're dual 20 micron uh, screens instead of uh, the larger ones from the factory that basically will, will allow some shrapnel to go through it and therefore damaging your injectors where this will at least catch all of that. Um, so that, no, it does not stop the CP4 from being damaged or from grenading itself, but it will stop it from damaging anything else in the system. So it's a lot cheaper of a, of a uh, replacement um, when it goes out instead of having to replace everything, including the injectors. So if anyone's ever done an FPR style job before, you know that the job itself is not that hard, but it's just that uh, getting to it that's kind of a challenge, right? So what we're trying to do is get all the way down in the valley, right down to that sensor right there on the very top of the CP4. Um, so we have to remove a few things to get down to that level, but once we're down there, it's not that hard of a job. So we're gonna probably gonna have to remove the AC compressor and try to get this engine harness here out of the way. And hopefully at that point, we'll have just enough room to be able to get the Torx bit down inside there, to be able to pop that out and put the new one in. Um, if we can do that without getting any of those fuel lines in there, uh, having to remove those, that would be great because if you do that, you'll introduce a little bit of air into the system. So we have to bleed that out and this becomes a little bit more of a tedious process. Um, so if we can do it without doing that, that would be great. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first thing is to remove the AC compressor, so we need to be able to get the tension off of the belt. So I've got a ratchet down on the tensioner assembly here, and I'm just going to crank on that just a little bit to relieve some tension. And pull that belt off, like that. And then relieve the tension there on the ratchet. So now that belt is off, now we'll just pull off these uh, four bolts. Actually, there's only three on these guys, actually. So we got three 15 millimeter bolts here. Pop that off, and this whole thing uh, remove a couple connections. We could take this whole thing and just fold it over to the side uh, to get it out of the way and it should open this area up quite a bit. Okay, so with the AC compressor removed, we've got a pretty good line of sight uh, to where we're going. It's right down here. As you can see, there's still a couple lines in the way, kind of right here. So what we're gonna do, those come up to this piece. And honestly, guys, I'm not really sure what this is. It's sitting on top of the thermostat housing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the two bolts that hold the Schrader valve um, port here on. I'm gonna just zip tie that out of the way, and then I can just pop this guy out as well. Uh, and that should get these lines out of the way. And once that's done, yeah, we'll have a couple of coolant lines here still. Uh, but we should be able to work around those. So we should have pretty good line of sight to it. So I'm just going to undo these two bolts, get that out of the way, pop this guy out of the way, and we'll get to it. All right, guys, so we are opened up just a little bit better now. It's kind of hard to tell, but it actually is fairly open. You can see sort of, it won't focus on it, but you can see one of the T25 bolts right there on the other side. The other one's 180 degrees from it. Um, so they're still pretty tight, but at the same time, you can actually, if you have a long extension for your Torx bit, uh, you should be able to straight shot it straight down to that. I've actually already loosened this one just a little bit to make sure that I could, um, but really it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. Um, basically stick a Torx bit down in there, take both those screws out. Now, one thing I am gonna do before I take it out is I'm going to uh, take an air hose. I'm gonna blow that area out as well as I can so that when I do pull this out, there won't be any debris that can fall down into the CP4 um, that will aid it in, in its uh, destruction. We definitely don't want that. So we're gonna clean this up as well as we can before we go any farther. And then we'll take both of those out, pop the connector off, put the new one in. Okay, so before we take the bolts out, we need to take the connector off. You can see it's just a push tab there. So push down on the tab and pull it out. Pretty self-explanatory. Pull that out, get it out of the way. 
and we'll go ahead and take the bolts out. Okay, so like you say, you will need some sort of an extension. So here I just have a six inch extension with a T25 on it. Um, that should be enough to get me into the one that's closer to the back of the motor. The one on the opposite side, I'm probably gonna have to use, use an actual straight wrench because um, there's not enough clearance for this large uh, bit holder here. So we'll just have to use a regular uh, torque wrench, uh, torx wrench there, but it shouldn't be that bad of a deal. I've actually already busted the one loose to make sure that they would loosen okay. Um, so basically stick this in, get the, uh, both the bolts out, and we should be able to wiggle the whole thing free. There's a pretty good shot right there of the second one. Like I say, it's very tight to the M prop itself. Um, so we'll need just a straight wrench to be able to get into that or a very long extension um, that is very thin. So shouldn't be a big deal. I've already got the other side out. Just need to pop that guy off yet. We'll be able to pull the whole thing out. Okay, guys, so here they are side by side. Um, this is the original OEM one. And here is the new one from Exergy. And you won't be able to see it very well from the camera, but I can actually see a difference in the size of the holes. Like I say, I think these might be 100 micron, and this is a dual 20 micron uh, or something similar to that, right? So you can just tell, um, basically, shrapnel, small shrapnel can get through these holes, and they can't get through this much tougher and also smaller uh, micron screen. So like I say, this is not going to save your CP4 from being damaged, but what it will do is it will save everything downstream from that, right? So all of the shrapnel that would then go into your fuel rail and would go into your injectors is now being held up right here um, so that it does not cost you ten thousand dollars it might cost you you know fifteen hundred dollars or whatever it might be to have or two thousand dollars to have a shop replace your cp4 or even do a cp3 conversion at that point um, but it will not cost you new piezo injectors for the lml's which are very expensive um, plus to have a shop do the work you know it gets very costly very quickly so it's a pretty simple job uh, realistically this was actually very easy um, in comparison to some of the other fprs that i've done uh, in the past um, so I would 100% recommend it. This is about a $240 part. Um, so definitely just give yourself that kind of peace of mind. No, it's not going to stop the CP4 from being damaged, but it will stop you from having to spend another six to $10,000 on injector replacement and fuel rails and all of that. All right, so we're ready to put the new one in. We're going to be very careful with this. Make sure that we don't um, damage anything or get any debris here um, within this as we put it down in there. I'm going to set it down in, and then I'm going to use a magnet to get the two screws down into the correct locations, and then we'll be able to thread them in from there. I'm going to be very careful as I put this down inside here and seat it into place. All right, so now that both of the screws are started, I'm just gonna use a quarter drive socket here, ratchet, excuse me, and just snug them down. I'm not going to go crazy tight. They're small screws, you will strip them out, and it will not be worth that, I guarantee that. So just stick this in on both sides of it here, get this thing snug down correctly, and then we can start rebuilding the top end of the motor. All right, nice and tight, real happy about that. Go ahead and plug in the connector on top of it again. Exact same way it came off, just plug it back in, flipped in. Now I need to go ahead and put these brackets back on here to be able to put this part back together, put the Schrader valve back on. And once we've got that, undo this engine harness and then go ahead and put the AC compressor back in its position. up the install guys obviously once it's running go down in there with a flashlight make sure nothing's leaking anything like that that you reinstalled everything uh, back the exact same way that we took it out uh, but once again it's not that hard um, I probably could have done this in 30 to 45 minutes had I not been filming you know it took a little bit longer than that as, as it does um, and that's more than fine so for $240 and an hour worth of work you know for that kind of peace of mind and that kind of insurance to not have to cost yourself another eight thousand dollars down the road to have a shop replace the whole rest of your fuel system is 100 percent worth it so this is a 240 dollar part direct from exergy performance um, and just for that peace of mind right so now the question becomes you know what can you actually do to save the cp4 from failing in general right um, now some of them don't seem to be having that big of a problem other ones have grenaded after you know fifty thousand miles we'll call it you know and so what can you do? Basically, just make sure that you um, have the best quality fuel that you possibly can. So, you know, make sure you're getting from a reputable gas station. If you want to run additives, um, I know people are up in arms, kind of go different ways on additives. If you feel like you need to run one, go ahead and run one. The other thing you can do is get yourself a lift pump. Talking about filtration again, get better filtration with the lift pump and make sure that that CP4 is not working extra hard 
provide that fuel up to the to the pump for it so it doesn't have to do extra work to pull the fuel and then also pressurize it um, we're going to do that on this truck probably with an air dog or a fast 150 or 165 pump um, just to make sure to just help that cp4 out as much as possible um, the only real great way to, to make sure your cp4 doesn't fail is to swap it with a cp3 which you definitely can do um, but once again that costs probably you know, upwards of two thousand dollars probably for that kit um, which is fine once again two thousand dollars is a whole lot less than eight to ten thousand dollars um, this is the cheaper way to basically just say, well, even if it does go, I'm willing to pay the $1,500 later, um, but it's not going to blow up everything else. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this useful. Have a great day.